In this lesson, we are going to look at the general properties of summation. So what? So whenever we are given a summation, right? So you always have the lower limit and the upper limit. So this tells you which term you start off with and what you end off with. Okay, and you need to add um, all the terms up, right? So how many terms are there when you do this summation? Well, to find the number of terms, you'll take n, okay, the upper limit, minus m, the lower limit, then plus 1. Recall that we have this term here. So just now, our example was r equals to 1 and 5 and 2r minus 1. So basically, it says that we are going to add up u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus u4 plus u5. Okay, so in other words, there are five terms here, right? And why are there five terms? Well, it is because you can do it by taking 5, which is n, minus 1, which is the m here, plus 1, which is 5. So therefore, there is 5 terms. Okay, you might see, say that, oh, it looks obvious, right? Because wherever you start off with r equals to 1, okay, you know that from 1 to 5, there are 5 terms, okay? But um, sometimes, maybe, let me give you an example. So I have 5r equals to 0, and I have ur here. So how many terms are there? Well, in this case, you have u0 plus u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus u4 plus u5. So there are a total of six terms. Okay, if you are to use the formula that I've written here, it is basically going to be 5 minus 0 plus 1, where you will get six terms as well. Okay, so uh, I, this formula is given so that it's easy for you to find the number of terms okay in the summation if you do not start off with one okay next let's look at this so if c is a constant then the summation of this is simply equals to n minus m plus one times c so let me explain what i mean okay so by giving an example first all right so what i'll do is let me um Okay, so now let's have this example. So r equals to 1 and 5, and c is any constant, right? So maybe I'll use the constant 10. Okay, so if you have to look at this here, does 10 has any r in it? No, right? So it means the first term, there's no r to sub in. So the first term is 10. When r is 2, it is also, the term is also 10. When r is 3, it is still 10. All the way until the fifth term, it is also 10, right? So basically, what we are doing now is we are basically adding 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, right? So this is u1, this is u2, this is u3, u4, u5. They are all constant, right? So c is a constant or 10 is a constant. So it won't change no matter what your value of r is. Okay, so in other words, right, you are basically going to add the constant uh, five times for this example here, right? Okay, because there are five terms. And if you have n minus n plus one terms here, then you're going to add c. So in this okay, example here, you have n minus n plus one term, right? And um, you're basically adding c by n minus n plus one times. And it will be simply equals to n minus n plus one times c. All right, okay. All right, next, let's look at 3. So if I have ur here, okay, so um, if I want to find the sum of the nth to the nth term, okay, then it is the same as adding from the first term to the nth term, then I minus from the first term to the nth minus one term. Okay? You might be wondering, why do I need to change this? 
Okay, this is because there are many useful results that you'll be using for summation. And these useful results or these formulas that you have always start off with r equals to 1. And that is why we often need to change it to start from r equals to 1. Okay, so basically what this is telling you is I want to add from the nth term all the way to the nth term. So it is the same as adding from the first term to the nth term and then taking away from the first term to the nth minus 1 term because these are the terms that we don't need. So for example, if you, so this one, so this means I want to add um, um plus 1 all the way to un, right? So it is the same as adding u1 plus u2 plus u3 all the way to un minus 1 plus un plus un minus 1 plus dot 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 all the way to un. Then I minus away these terms because I only want these terms here, right? From um all the way to un. So I just need to minus away these terms here. Okay, and these terms here from u1, maybe I should write in a bracket. So basically the addition of these terms, so these terms here are basically represented by this summation here. First term to nth minus 1 term. Okay, so I want you to remember how to break this down if you need to start off with r equals to 1. So you go from 1 to r first, so 1 to n here. So this and this are the same. Then this is 1 less than this one here. Alright, so this and this. This here is 1 less because I do not want the term before r equals to m. So I need to subtract everything from 1 all the way to m minus 1 term. All right. Next, let's look at this. So if I have a constant term multiplied by a function containing r, then I can put the constant term outside meaning that I have this three, maybe uh, r squared plus five, uh, maybe r squared, just r squared. Okay, then I can rewrite it as this. Okay, and by finding what is the summation of this, okay, and multiplying it by 3 will give me this value that I need here. Take note, C must be a constant or basically it must not have any R in it. Okay, because if you have maybe you have R plus 1, R minus 2. Okay, it is not equals to this, all right? You cannot split it up this way. This is wrong. Similarly, okay, if you have this, okay, you cannot sum r plus 1. You cannot do this, okay? Okay, this is also wrong. Okay, we just need to put in a few examples, maybe starting from um, m equals to 1 to 2. You'll notice that it doesn't hold at all. So remember, if c is not a constant, just leave it as what it is. Okay, so in other words, right, if there's this is r, okay, so if this is r and c has no r in it, then you can bring it outside. But once it has some r in it, you cannot split it, it must remain here. You cannot split it into two summation, neither can you split it this way. All right, remember this. Okay, same thing for division, since we are talking about this, right? So same thing for division. So if you have this, okay, 
it is not equals to summation of r plus 1. Okay, this is not correct. Don't do this, okay? So be careful. So take note of these, okay? Common mistakes that people make. So this is a common mistake. This is a common mistake for uh, multiplication and division. You cannot split them up into individual summation signs, okay? But let's look at results five. Okay, but when it is plus and minus or when it is addition and subtraction, you can split them up into, uh, you can split the summation signs up. So what I meant is this. So for example, if I have summation of r equals to 1 to 10, and maybe I have 3r minus 1. Okay, I can split it to r equals to 1, 3r minus 1. Okay, I can split it up. If I have a plus here, I can also change this to plus. So I can split it up into this way, this manner, okay? So in other words, just remember, when you have addition or subtraction, you can split the summation up, okay? And here, uh, okay, so you can split it up. Okay, if I want to apply this part to part 4, I can further split it up into... this right because 3 is a constant so i can so i can split it up into this all right 